what is up guys welcome back to the channel guys we got an interesting one here um uh, i've been having this video kind of saved put away i forgot that i had it when i was doing the videos the prison series and stuff like that about nordic prisons versus american prisons and we have an ex uh inmate here mr larry loft lawton and if he's given his comparisons that we're about to check out um, before we jump into this y'all make sure y'all follow your boy on instagram I do have a twitch and a patreon if you'd like to support your boy over on those platforms but mr larry lawton here giving us american prisoner compares norway prison to our criminal justice prison system which i've told y'all before just all that I know. Now, I've never been to prison, so this is going to be interesting to see that we have a former ex-prisoner give his, you know, thoughts on, and I don't know how long he's been in prison or anything like that, but it's going to be interesting to hear. But y'all hit that subscribe button, and I'll put the link to Mr. Larry's channel in the description so y'all can check that out because it seems like he does he does a lot of videos, very active. I mean, as y'all can see, all the YouTube stuff he have back here, so uh he he has a million subscribers so it's very cool that he can share his story and stuff hey everybody Larry Check it out. here i got a great review for you today a lot of people have been asking me to do this i'm going to be comparing american prisons with the norway prison a place called halden it's a prison that's oh, okay. uh, doing a lot of great stuff in norway but before I get started, please check us out on YouTube. I always say nice. check us out on our member programs, Patreon, YouTube, our Discord. Please check our merch out. Please check oh, out dang, my you got merch and a book. And you guys will love it. Now, the prisons in Norway are built on rehabilitation. The prisons mm -hmm. in the United States are built on punishment, not rehabilitation. It's a big difference. Very I've big. been checked into a lot of prisons, and it's never a pleasant experience. Oh. Hi. Now I've seen a little bit of this excerpt I might have to find it on uh, One of the other channels I think on the Swedish network somebody told me they have this one Because I've just seen a little bit of this one Of this uh, I, don't, I don't even know this guy's name but It was like 10 minutes so I'm going to try to find that for This is the Check first time too. I've had a welcoming handshake From a guard The minute you get in there They shake your hand who the fuck? I never had a. I, I, I'm in shackles. First of all, you come in in belly irons and shackles like this, <laughs> and a guy's shaking your hand. It's like, wow. Well, I mean, talk about put you at ease or, or put you at uh, awkward situation. And you're wondering, like, want to? Well, you know, usually it's in the United States, it's us against them. You know, mm -hmm. it's the, the the guards against the inmates. That's where you want it. You don't want you know inmate on inmate. You want in, you know that you wanted to take that you wanted to have that pride you were a fighter i was a convict fuck the system but you know the system he absolutely right because you can also see it mainly uh like i said i've never been to prison but everything he said i can still i've still seen it on prison movies here in the States. made me that way and why i mean that is in in norway they focus on rehabilitation they had a shop they were fixing cars making tables to train inmates on how to how to make a living, give them a real trade. Gosh, this is crazy. I'm really impressed by what I'm seeing here. I mean, these guys are underneath the cars doing something I don't know. Okay. It looks like this guy's changing the exhaust. This prison is very clever in creating a normal environment, a working environment, just like you get outside. Now, the United States says, oh, we're going to train and we're going to, you know, we're going to give them Unicorn. Well, Unicorn is slave wagers. That's, you're not learning a trade. Mm. That's slave wagers. Wow. Now they'll have what they call CMS in the United States. And then they'll have the plumbers and the, and the carpenters mm. and the uh, electricians. But they, don't, this is, this makes me laugh. They don't take a guy like, let's say, Larry Lawton doesn't know anything about plumbing and we're going to teach him a trade. So let's teach him that trade. No, they take a real plumber who screwed up his life out there and they just use him as wow. a person to do work. That's all it is. So they're making their That's jobs. Good. They're not training somebody new for a job on the outside. There's no job training. There's no education. 
I love it in the United States, they say, oh, we have education. Uh, we make them get their GED. They do do that. They will make you go. If you don't have a GED, they'll make you go to school. But what did they do in the United States? They stopped all kind of uh, uh, grants or anything wow. where a person, they call them Pell Grants and this different mm -hmm. grants, so an inmate could try to educate himself, maybe with a college degree in, in business or a college degree in uh, a law, law or anything. I did. I had to pay for correspondence courses when I was in prison. Wow. If I didn't have the money to do that, the system wasn't helping me at all. Yeah. The system doesn't help you. We. That's insane because I was just talking to somebody and they said they knew somebody that's in prison that ended up getting their college degree. Mind you, they've been in here 10 plus years so far, but they got life in prison. So it's like, how are you even going to use that? And y'all know our life in prison means you in there until you die. And I've learned that uh, at least in the Nordic prison system, like life in prison means about 20, 20, at least 20 to 21 years. That's it. But here it's like, even if I learned this trade, if I got a life in prison, how am I going to use it? I'm like learning we for don't nothing. like to dress up like this, but if we have to, we have to. The prison has a unique subterranean oh, tunnel snap. system that offers rapid access to any part of the complex. The guards here train for every eventuality. When I was in the hole in, in USP Atlanta, when they came and got you, like if they had to do what they call an, a cell extraction, which they showed in this show. A cell extraction is when they got to come with, we call them the goon squad. Uh, the prison system calls them the sort team. Uh, when they wow. come and get you and they cell extract you, they come down the tier and everybody's at their door looking. And then later they used to put cover the windows because they beat you so bad uh, that they didn't want anybody to see what they were doing to you. That but anyway, so now everybody's seeing you, they're hearing you down the tear, they're hearing the screams, and the, this is in America. Well, in Norway, they have underground catacombs, a whole system. So when they want to transfer that inmate or go into a place to get their cell extraction, you don't got to bother anybody in the whole entire wow. prison, you know, I mean, whatever it is, in the whole system, you don't have to bother, bother them. I mean, it's a matter of people don't even know what's going on. This is very That's different, true. isn't it? You're not a prisoner. Yeah. Hello, nice. I, I'm Raphael. <laughs> yeah. Is that the right thing to do for a prisoner who's here on the first day to, to greet a prison officer? Oh, yeah. That's normal, is it? Oh, yeah, I remember. This doesn't that. feel normal, a prison officer sitting down on the sofa having a chat with prisoners. Uh, it's like that here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, in the United That's States, if a guard did that, he's going to be fired. Because they're going to yep. think he's being corrupted. And uh, they don't want the guards to interact with the inmates because they think they're going to be manipulated. And I've seen that many times. That's what I've heard, too. And it's like, they're still human. And people think just because you talk and, you know, get to know somebody that you just, you don't automatically just become friends. Like, you can just build a bond with somebody to help them through something. But I feel like here, like he said, you talk to an inmate roughly, they would say you're doing your job. You talk to an inmate nicely and being, you know, proactive and caring and kind, there will be they will just think that, like, what are you doing? Like, I don't, I feel like that makes no sense. Like to lose my job for being nice to somebody that you know possibly deserves a second chance, or you know, being nice to somebody that probably was wrongly convicted to get here. It's well, you know what that shows me? That you're either hiring the wrong people mm. or you have no faith in the guards that you hire. Exactly. That you think they're going to be corrupted. That's what it is. That's how bad it is. That's a bad statement on the, uh, on the powers that be in a prison. Because if you hire people that you don't trust to interact with someone and maybe understand the vibe of the prison, what's mm. going on in a prison, whatever it is, and you just don't trust them to to uh, not get manipulated. What you're saying is that we're hiring the idiots that can't be trusted and, <laughs> right. and inmates are gonna manipulate them. They're just idiots. And that's a sad thing that's because I sad. know guards that were great guards, like I said, Gary Massey, certain other guards I know in prison that were good dudes. We had no intention of corrupting them. 
If they want to be corrupted, you'll be corrupted. It's not like that. It's not like, oh, let's corrupt that guy. It, it comes naturally, it, what, however it comes. Yeah. The guy might need it or whatever that the case is, and they don't pay them enough in a lot of ways. The interaction with the guards and the inmates showed me a lot of trust for the system of Norway prison. A lot of trust in their own employees. Um, they must pay them pretty good or whatever it is. But it was a trust in the system. You're trusting the people you hire to handle these inmates. And obviously, I'm, I mean, I try to look behind the scenes of something like this going on. And again, they even say, if you got 20, even 20% 20 recidivism rate, that means 20% of all those people in there are coming back. Now, yeah. obviously, can people be corrupted? Are they corrupted? Yes. Or do I think there's... I don't think they really, you know, they really... Listen, they focus on straight rehabilitation. And that's what I like. Criminal records. I remember, yeah, I gotta watch, I gotta find this whole excerpt right here. But I like everything he just said. Trust. Why would you hire somebody you don't trust? Why would you hire somebody that you don't feel like can get the job done? And you see here in Norway, they hiring people that they trust that can build, you know, you know, just even more than relationships that can really be beneficial to somebody's life and changing and rehabbing. So. But criminal oh, records, it's insane. I mean, this has got to be worth Great. tens of thousands of pounds of recording equipment. It's a question I'm keen to put to Dutch drug smuggler, Theo. Now, I'll tell you what, you know, this is going to be really weird for me to say this. A part of me almost thinks they're too easy. Uh, and I don't know, <laughs> it was really hitting me differently while I was watching this. Thinking about my own prison time and thinking about how good we could do or a lot mm -hmm. do a lot better in the United States uh, compared to other countries. And, and this is not just Norway, obviously Germany, yeah. Sweden, a lot of these other prisons, Italy, France, they have a lot better prison systems than the United States. Mm -hmm. The United States just has a suck ass prison system. <laughs> Does it For feel sure. like you're in prison? You, I understand your question. Because no bars and it's not like a, a prison prison. But still, you're inside. Yeah, and so you cannot go anywhere. And you miss your family. And so that's, it's, it's still a prison. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter that you're in an environment that is treating prisoners with humanity, dignity, respect. Their focus is on rehabilitating people. So let me compare the two prisons. Uh, the maximum security prison was a place called Halden in, in, in Norway. And I'm going to compare it to USP Atlanta when I was in Atlanta in the United States. Now, you want to talk about totally different look and feel. Atlanta was built in 1903. This place is pretty new, I mean real new. Uh, they treat you in this prison in Norway like a human. You actually yeah. get a room, you don't get a cell. In Atlanta, you get thrown in with the wolves and, and, and you're in mm -hmm. just squalid conditions. Uh, I mean, the worst of the worst, whether it's the weather, yeah, yeah. If, if it was during a time where the winter was there, there'd be broken glass and it'd be freezing oh in God. your cell and you're literally shivering, I mean, in your cell, laying in a, in, in a ball in Atlanta, because I did this, I did wow. this. That is, that is very sad, that is crazy. Like, when you think about it, it I, I've, I've heard of animals getting treated better than humans that is that is wild and you know you're that freezing your balls are fucking you know sucked up into your body your whole body is just you're freezing Damn. and they didn't give a shit they're lucky if they give you one little blanket lucky in this Halden prison in, in Norway, wow, they have an actual room. They actually have a refrigerator in the room. They have a TV in the room. It's nice to eat with a knife and a fork. Uh, it's just totally different. And I'm talking, let me, let me give you a little, first of all, let me give, let's break it down into the criminal justice system. In the United States, very barbaric system. You can get life for shit. Doing things are not even a, a violent crime. You could be a drug dealer, a big drug dealer, and get life. I mean, you didn't <laughs> kill anybody. You didn't. Man, I had I had a relative. He ended up 
he ended up getting life for drugs, selling drugs. But I think he ended up only doing like 10 to 12 years. But they gave him life. Then you just start hearing people on the news killing folks. And I think they gave a woman like five years for killing somebody. I was like, that's insane. They gave somebody else 10 years for killing somebody or raping somebody. But you sell drugs, life. I'm like, wow. You do it in a order of murder, you'll get life, depending on the weight of the crime and all, oh. weight of the drugs and all that. In Norway, no matter what crime you commit, murder. This one guy they, they did in a show uh, killed a rival drug dealer, buried his body. He got 17 years. Dang. The maximum sentence you can get in Norway is 21 years. 21 years. Well, they better be on rehabilitation. In the United States, you know, you give a guy a life sentence. And again, in the United States, like, life is letters. You're getting L-I-F-E. Boom, stamped in your jacket. Time. You're done. You never get out. You get out mm -hmm. in a body bag. And most of them get life without parole, which means, yeah, you ain't got no chance. Period. You get out in the body back. So it's not like you're, you're going to, oh, you know, get parole out of that. There's no parole. It's none. Mm -hmm. It's none. Like I said, the United States is one of the most harshest systems in the world. Very harsh. So now, uh, the United States has this life and sentence and all that kind of stuff. Norway's 21 years, so they're getting out, and they really, really focus on rehabilitation. Let me tell you how deep they focus. Before they changed their system in Norway, they had about a 70% recidivism rate, kind of like the United yeah. States. Mm -hmm. Now they have a between a 20 and 30% recidivism rate. That's a rate. major think drop. Of that. Think That's of the major. money they're saving. I don't care how much it costs to, to rehabilitate this guy. He's not reoffending. 20 to 30% recidivism mm -hmm. rate compared to a 70%? That's it's not even that's not even something that can be debated mm -hmm. it, it if you don't do that you're an idiot and there's where I, I look at the United States and I think it's a real corrupt system and I think it's a money system and I think it's private prison system which I did hear Biden is not uh, it is stopping all uh, federal contracts uh, with private prisons yeah. I hope it's true and that's not just some political bullshit uh, which I think it is myself because they I feel like, you know, when it comes to politics, they just say stuff, you know, to get those votes and, you know, but he's absolutely right. It's a money grabber. Uh, I've I've given money to the systems for family members and people I know that's in prison. And when I tell you it's they need money every every day, every week, it's almost like it's a, it, it's a crazy thing because they got to pay to use the phone. They got to pay. They pretty much everything that they do just about cost. And, you know, like he mentioned earlier, they can get jobs within this. What they get in, it's like, it's almost like slavery. They get in pennies to the dollar, you know, to work an eight hour shift or something, five hours, however long they work, they're not getting nothing. So, what happened? You call family members, and of course, family members putting probably $20 a day on there. You know, that stuff starts adding up. It really starts adding up to the point. That you looked the whole year, you done probably gave that person ten thousand dollars just to the system to you know do what they need to do in prison. Then before you know it, if they if you giving them ten thousand dollars, they got five. You didn't gave the system fifty thousand bucks. It's a money grabber. But whatever it is, my point is the systems are totally different. They're looking at people as human beings. And, you know, even in the United States, I think it's 96% of all inmates are getting out. 96%. So it's 4 or 5% that are never getting out. Well, that's 95% of people that you want to be seen real, rehabilitated because who do you want living next to you? I often tell yeah. people, you know, when you rehabilitate someone, you're not only helping that person because he's not going to commit another crime. You're preventing victims. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're out there right now and you're looking at this video and you're thinking, who's my neighbor? How would you like the neighbor to come to you? A guy moves in and, you know, you, he rents from you. I don't know where you're at, whatever it is, close by. And he's a guy who's bitter, don't give a fuck. And before you know it, he can't get a job because he wasn't rehabilitated. He has no yeah. trades. And he says, fuck this. And he's now looking for his next victim. Mm. Do you want that guy living next to you? That makes sense. That makes sense. And too, most people that get out, especially if the charge is not, they're still getting out felons. So it's hard for a felon to get a job 
out here. Like they can't they can't go work at the type of place I would want to work. You know what I'm saying? Like felons, they can't work with kids or nothing. They couldn't go be a teacher. Like then you. Oh, do you felon. want the guy that really learned rehabilitation was mm-hmm. taken off drugs, got fixed from drugs, was maybe helped with a trade, and all of a sudden. That guy is now your neighbor, wants to help you and, and, and even do things for you because mm-hmm. these people are good people. Now, you're going to get a lot of feedback. I know I'm going to get this feedback, everybody. I know it's happening. Yeah. I'm going to get the feedback of, what about the victims? And you're right. Mm-hmm. How's this? I'm not even going to fight that. I feel for victims, but I'm trying to prevent more victims. Yeah. It's not so much I'm some bleeding heart liberal uh, anything like that. I think if we fix a person, he's going to have less victims. So now you're actually saving people. You're helping people because the, now there's no more victims. And, you know, yes, do I feel for the victims? But you can, once a person becomes a victim, there's nothing you can do to just change that and make that person whole again and not be a victim. Sad as that is. And, and, and what's also sad is, you know... Uh, I really feel bad for somebody who loses somebody or something, but you can never get yeah. that person back. Uh, and there are crimes. I know, I, you know, I often, people ask me about, you know, the pro- crimes in prison or, you know, the, I call it prison justice. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody you think about, and you think about this, think about this good. Whitey Bulger, the, the snitch from Boston, who was a federal informant for years, who was a major mm-hmm. criminal, played both sides of the aisle. Went to a, a prison, I think Hazleton, Hazleton, uh, USP Hazleton in the federal system, and he was killed his first day. Wow. They put his eye out with a shank, and they, and they were cutting his tongue out, and they killed him. That's called prison justice. That's the wildest thing I done heard. Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, he is right Well, just going back to the victims and stuff. like It's a sad case because it's one of those things like people don't realize. One of the hardest things to do in life, no matter what you've done, who you are, what's happened, it's hard to forgive. Forgiveness is one of the toughest things to do. And, you know, it can be, you know, somebody might have done something major to you or minor to you. But forgiveness is hard. It really takes like a lot of time and, you know, just mentally changing your mind to forgive forgiveness is hard you know it it makes it different but it is a hard thing it's not you, easy they were challenge. cutting his tongue out and they that killed him crazy that's called prison justice you want to talk about jeffrey dama who ate people goes to <laughs> prison crazy. he gets killed in prison yeah. by the inmates that's called prison justice if you're a rapist or if you're uh, if you're a child molester or something like that oh yeah I that's not going over get... well in prison and i always hear People that rape or molest children and stuff, I always hear they first day or when they go to prison, they uh, those prisoners do not like and that. that's they called go, prison they justice. Them. But comparing Norway to the United States penal systems, not only system the prisons. How about this? There's no comparison. You can't compare them. Uh, the United States system is broke. It needs to be tore down and rebuilt. It has to be torn down. I don't mean the prisons, every one of them, obviously, because there's new prisons, everything else. Hell, they make them all. It, they need to take prisons, and, and the way they rehabilitate, the way they run prisons needs to be changed. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, some people say, oh, Norway's a small country. compared. You're right. But every every state in the United States yeah. has its own way of doing things. Yeah. And, you know, each state can do it different. But the federal government uh, is... 200 and something thousand inmates. So it's not like it's, you know, millions. There's over 2.3 million people incarcerated in the United States. But the federal system, I'm talking about the federal system. And comparing the federal system to the uh, Norway system and hauled in prison, there's no comparison. They treat people like human beings. Yeah. When you treat a person like a human, you're going to get a human. You yeah. treat a person like an animal, he's going to become an animal. Exactly. That's fact. Somebody commented on that, uh, commented that phrase on one of my other videos I did. That is facts. So if you want to look at a good show, go look at uh, Netflix. It's called Inside the World's Toughest Prisons. But go to Norway. 
Go to the mm -hmm. Norway show. Now, I'm watching other shows on there now. Of course, I keep watching them. I know Raphael. And uh, he goes into some horrific prisons. But they're third world country prisons. I don't compare the United States to a third world country. I just don't. I compare it to other pr other countries in the, in the same kind of financial situations mm -hmm. and economic yeah. situations as the United States. When you can do that and then compare them and say, oh, the United States is better, uh, I, I can't find one. Not wow. one wow. country where the uh, uh, United States is, is a better prison system. Uh, it's just sad. It is what yeah. it is. Uh, we need to change it. Prison reform is a real thing. You know I'm here for that. We're going to do a bunch of stuff on that. This pandemic's almost over. I'm going on the road. We're going to do a whole show on this. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, anyway, everybody, on. I really want to thank you for listening and, and watching this show. Much love, much respect. Good job, Norway. If you anybody in Norway is watching this, give us a, a, a comment or email me or hit us up on the fans in the back of YouTube there in the about page. And I want to hear from you because your country's doing a good job yeah. and, and good for you guys. Seems a little cold there though. Anyway, <laughs> guys, have a great day. Very cold. Uh, stay there. strong. United States, let's fix this prison system somehow. I really hope we can do it. And we need the will and the way and get private prisons on the road. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Please make good choices. I don't want to see you in prison ever or anybody in prison ever. It's just, it's not the way to go. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. This was good. This was good, man. I'm glad I got to watch this. I really am because... Man, he, he said a lot right there. He did. He really did. And that's why I, I'm i glad I got to see this one because he was absolutely right. He's absolutely right, Mr. Larry. I didn't know he'd go on the road and do show. This video, I think, is like two years old. Yeah, it's two years old. It was, uh, he did this two years ago. But, man, he is absolutely right. You know, treat him like humans. Come out acting like you. You treat them like animals. Gonna get animals. But I agree with Mr. Larry. Long time. Definitely gonna have to check out more. Um, and see. Because like I said. I have family members that's in there. And it's. It's it, it's horrible here. Especially. Con when, like he mentioned. Like the financial part of it. How much money the U.S. makes and have. And <laughs> the prison system. Pretty much. I'm sure they're up there making the most money and they're incarcerating the most people. Land of the free. But majority of the people locked up a good amount compared to everywhere else. But we're the land of the free. What is freedom? What is freedom, America? What is freedom? But thank you again, Mr. Larry. Uh, like I said, y'all make sure y'all check his channel out. Uh, Follow him, subscribe. I'm definitely about to subscribe to his channel and check out more. But he's right, Norway. You're doing it right. And that's all I have. Y'all hit that subscribe button and be blessed. Be the best and be you. I'm out.